Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Sword Warrior and Shieldbert's Spectacular Podcast. We're all the way up to episode nine, which if you're counting is more toes than the head coach of Montreal Milotic has. Joining me, Lab Dog, head coach of the Boston Braviaries, your commissioner and the reign champ, is Matt, head coach of the LA Kinglers. Hi, Matt. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Good, thank you. And Josh, head coach of the Waco Scissors. Hey, coming off a winning weekend, beating the Boston Braviaries. And the yeah, week highlight there. of your season, no doubt, no doubt. We'll, <laughs> we'll break that down a little later. So for those who have been following the uh, podcast and everything, this uh, episode was supposed to be an all uh, rules committee episode, the uh, ERC as it's called. Um, unfortunately, a couple of our members had to bail sort of last minute. So we'll still go over some of the stuff that the ERC has been working on and everything. Obviously we won't like talk ad nauseum about it since not all parties are here. You know, we'll probably develop a uh, statement after that, unless we're able to get like more people. Maybe next week I can get the other couple members on, but again, we'll see about that. Um, yeah, but so for those who don't know, within the league, we held a kind of halfway through the season survey, a uh, state of the league, as you would. I think a lot of people would uh, call that. I'm um, just kind of talking about, you know, how people felt about the league, certain changes they would like, et cetera. A um, couple open-ended questions and a couple more just like poignant questions. So, um, and the ERC had access to this uh, knowledge. Well, not knowledge, but survey results. So we were able to kind of compile the data and go over it. Um, as far as the open-ended stuff, uh, some minor things on there. We saw like some people wanted, I know Montreal has been a big proponent of this, more like shiny giveaways and stuff like that. Kind of like adding some more fun stuff to like the social media pages. You know, that's all well and good. I, I'm not gonna, you know, if each coach wants to do that unto themselves, I think that's fine. I think the uh, ERC would say the same thing, you know, if, you have a shiny or a special Pokemon you want to give away, then by all means, however you feel is best to do that. If you know, you're bringing fun to the league, then that's awesome. Um, I don't remember any other like really minor things. I mean, we got a few big ones that we'll tackle right now. Guys, do you remember any like minor things that you wanted to bring up real quick? I know a couple people brought up like those fun giveaways that have popped up here and there. The, the giveaway no, that's what I was gonna say. Smallest thing. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that'll be fun. And I know a lot more people are getting into recording the videos, which is awesome. So hopefully we'll see more of those migrate to the YouTube page and all that. So again, more fun and leak. So kind of we broke down the rest of the answers into kind of three uh, major topics. Um, one was just making sure like communication, right? Uh, a lot of stuff has been, you know, we got Facebook, we got Discord, we got these podcasts. Um, you know, Matt and I have been kind of talking about like, oh, maybe we should get like Twitter handles or something, right? Maybe maybe that's a next season endeavor, you know, use that off season to kind of establish yeah. that at this point. But- uh, Gotta get those handles early though. Yeah, 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 before someone swoops in. Yep. Uh, just don't get, yeah, all that matters is that blue little uh, stamp thing, right? Whatever that right. is. Right, check mark. But uh, yeah, but anyway, so communication. So I think, uh, and you guys can kind of like jump in wherever, obviously I'm like kind of talking here. <laughs> but uh, using Discord as a hub of the information and the discussion. And basically I think what most people are using the Facebook pages for, for the coaches who run their own and for myself, like it's kind of just a copy paste job from what's already been put on the Discord for most part, right? Like Discord is where you're gonna get the information and then the Facebook is like, okay, information with some fun pictures or something, and but it's mostly copy and paste. So you gotta make sure that uh, if you're following with the league, um, definitely watch the podcast because those are good review stuff for those outside the league, but within the league, definitely like the Discord is your number one spot. Um, 
and we're looking at other avenues to kind of clear up some other points, um, which we'll discuss a little later on. Uh, did you guys want to talk any more about the uh, communication aspect of that? I do want to say, like, I think, um, I know we have more players than before, but I feel like there's a lot more conversation on Discord than there ever was on Facebook. Like before on Facebook, it was just like, post the results, have a few converse, have a few, someone says something beneath the results and that's it. And now on Discord, people are like chatting back and forth, like yeah, all yeah. time. Which, which I would also say is good, but that could also be why certain uh, things are getting lost. Like I think, uh, like Josh, you made a good point about a week or so ago to have like just an announcements page. Um, yeah, I had trouble finding like the uh, like the Google Google Drive link and the tier list. At the keyword searches like all the time to find it. So yeah. that was a good check. So you guys, you guys feel free free to talk for a little bit. Uh, Josh, why don't you kind of go over the next? Um, big point was kind of like uh, free agents and kind of like moving the uh, bulk of those transactions from, you know, they all went kind of through the commissioner, now moving them more towards like the ERC and more of a peer review state. Yeah, so um, before on Mondays, the commissioner would get all the uh, all the free agent requests and then he would make the public um, at the end of the day. If And if there were, if there were anybody who wanted like the same Pokemon, um, whoever was like the lower, the, the lower ranking the season got precedence over that for, for that that pick. Um, in order to, uh, I guess, prevent any questions of honesty or anything, um, now the ERC will see all of the free agents picks. Um, so all five of us, uh, and obviously that'll change every season. So it's not like you know me or Matt or. Um, has access to this information every season. Um, we'll just see the timestamps, the first requesting, and uh, and what they're requesting, and then you know make sure everything is kosher. Um, th that was the that was the big thing. Um, I wonder if we find some kind of submission form or something that people could just fill out. That way we can all we all have access to it at once. Uh, I don't know if that might be cool as well. You Either that or like a mailbox, just a mailbox to go out to all five of the committee members. Something like yeah, that. that would that that would be good. Um, and that way, there's absolutely no there's absolutely no question at all about about anything. It's all five of us seeing it at once. Um, I think the same thing could be true for for trades. I mean, if it's a one and one one to one trade, like I don't think it's really big of a deal. But if it is like a major like multiple Pokemon deal, like. It, you know, we need to vote on it anyway. Um, probably some kind of submission form or mailbox that we can all access uh, to, to see those things and, and make that information public so it can be voted on. Yeah, exactly. So uh, as Josh kind of said, so what we did this week was we still had people send stuff to me, but I just like screenshot it and then shared it to the ERC group so like they could see what time everyone sent it and who it was asking for certain things. Um, so, yeah, if anyone, like, obviously we're looking for something a little bit more streamlined, so if anyone has any suggestions, uh, definitely, you know, shoot them our way, and we'll look into that, because we would like to make it easier for all of us as well. Um, and kind of the last big thing is, uh, and Matt and Josh obviously can, can talk about this too, as, as Josh kind of already alluded to with uh, the changing rules committee, but just making sure that like there's a governing body that's like rotating every season or something. Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but I would say a number of people were interested in a rotating or third party kind of like governing body or commissioner. Um, I think that, and obviously you guys like stop me if I'm kind of like putting words in, in mouths or whatever, but I don't view like the commissioner role as like a overall governing body. Like that's why this season, like I want to make like a rules committee for, for those kind of like decisions. Like I just want to like have the league and have fun with it and make these fun podcasts and put up videos and stuff and be able, you know, to do that kind of stuff. Um, 
and having, and it was always from the beginning, like we all knew like, okay, the rules committee is gonna change every season, right? Like that was something that we talked about right at the beginning. And I think uh, maybe it was the lack of need for the rules committee through most of the first half of the season that people didn't even realize really that there was this committee that was overseeing the league. Um, we saw one question about that today, right? Like, what's the character? Well, I, I, I mean, we we also look at who that's from, and well, I, no, I just I, like, I think that could have been tongue in cheek a little bit, but yeah. Well, it could have been. It could have. It still could have been something that that could have come up. You know, the pe- people only check in the Discord once in a while or something, and yeah, just, you know. Yeah, but again, I think that uh, for better or for worse, I mean, that's kind of how it happened. Is, for most of this first part of the season. Um, but for those who are in the league, uh, I've already announced who's gonna be part of the season three ERC. Matt actually stepped in for this latter half of season two because uh, a member uh, stepped down from the ERC. Uh, and Matt will actually be part of the latter half of this one and for next one. So. Uh, I think that he'll be able to bring some knowledge there, but I mean, obviously there will be three other new ERC members with him and everything, so that will be good. Uh, going to season two, they'll be able to break down the tier list, go over a new rule doc, uh, talk about a lot of other, you know, wrinkles or however you want to put it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, you guys want to add anything else to that? Basically, the main concern was just making sure that who's making the rules and like overseeing the structure. There's like an ebb and flow, right? And yeah, so so I was gonna say I think that having the actual distinction between commissioner and rules committee is gonna be something that's important and for people to understand because I think people were misunderstanding what the rules committee was as compared to what the commissioner role was. Whereas the rules committee is acting as the commissioner and the governing body, whereas people were expecting the commissioner to do that uh, solely. Yeah, which isn't fair to <laughs> the commissioner and to everybody else, right? Like, that's not a position yeah. that anybody wants to be in. You want to have a group of people, you know, to have different judgments and different points of views and also for that if they make something and a couple people aren't upset you know you're, you're upset at five people instead of one person hopefully <laughs> right but, and so i think it's also about like parity and fairness and all of, uh, competitive balance yeah yeah for sure and i think my two and three record shows that uh the commissioner is pretty balanced competitive despite what this despite record. that trophy yeah Despite what this trophy said, but um, um, I think uh, I think the I think the ERC is like as I don't know I don't want to say floundered, but it wasn't super clear outside of like making the initial rules and like one or two things that happened really early on. What we're supposed to do, but I think now like it's more clear that it has more. Of a, yeah. A, well, a, in, a in a perfect world, though, right? You get everything kind of like ironed out for the rules, yeah. and, and then you just kind of as stuff comes up, which it did. Um, obviously, I think that, again, the lack of need early on and therefore the lack of communication of what this governing body was kind of like confused or eluded people in the league and therefore, you know, different perceptions were uh, and opinions were made. But yeah, I think overall, um, you know, and I, I can, I think we can speak for the two members who aren't here because obviously we talked all about this privately and we went over these survey results um, amongst ourselves. And, you know, after we were able to compile all the data and look at and everything, we were able to come to these mutual understandings and conversation and all that. So um, obviously, you know, I hope that uh, Chris and Tom, who are also part of the ESC, will be able to come on next week's podcast or something. And uh, if they have something they would want to add, I would definitely ask them to uh, speak out about that. But I think uh, we basically covered that part of it. So though, that, that was like the open-ended part of the surveys, which were pretty fun to read um, overall, I'd say. 
And then there was a more kind of like multiple choice part, which will kind of like go over here. So we ended up having 12 out of the uh, 16 people answer the survey. So pr pretty good number, I'd say, of, of people answered them. So here was one of the open-ended questions. Uh, how likely are you to return for season three? Uh, just a quick shout out. I want to shout out Devin, head coach of the Detroit Steelers, for putting this together for the ERC while he was a part of it. So, um, you know, he put some like funny little meme answers in here, which are, which are nice. Always good. Um, so, yeah, we'll kind of go over here. So, two respondents said there is no league without me. So, you know, kind of probably Tuscaloosa said that or something. I don't know. I'm not calling anybody out. Um, pretty likely that was five. Uh, haven't decided is four. And one person said not without change. Um, I think we'd have to look back. I know we kind of talked about it when we were first going over the surveys, but what, what exact change might they have asked for? Um, I hope that, you know, we kind of hit upon all the major points and they can see where the league as a whole is going for that uh, one person. Um, but overall, seven out of the 12 answers that pretty likely and then four uh, are kind of 50-50, which out of 16 people, I, I can understand. Like, this is a kind of a grueling schedule for people to keep up with over and over again. So I can kind of understand that did you guys want to say anything in response to that uh part of the survey i don't think uh, so I, yeah i think it's pretty self -mentor. i think it i think it shows that um at least nobody is so distraught with the league that they would drop out yeah yeah pardon me all right um this one was more of like an erc specific question because obviously before we put these polls out, uh, we realized that people didn't really understand what the ERC uh, what its role or what its capacity was. So how comfortable are you bringing concern to the ERC? Um, very overwhelmingly uh, positive, nine votes said very comfortable, one said not sure, one said pure bias, and one said what is ERC, which may have been uh, Matt from the Minnesota New Kings because he asked that same exact question today. <laughs> But again, so overall, I'd say that, you know, people are open to communicating with the rules committee. Uh, did you guys have anything you wanted to talk about that? No, but if you still know who the ERC is, it's up. Plus yeah. Montreal and Lavender Town. Right. And uh, again, the five coaches, part of this, you know, if you have an issue, bring it up with one of us. We bring it to the committee we talk about it if it requires a vote on something we'll we'll vote on it etc um next one what form of 5s communication do you find most effective overwhelmingly discord which again i think uh pretty self-explanatory like that's where most people get their information that's where we're communicating so really not too much like aviorni uh, this one is, I think this is like the key question out of all these, right? I mean, other than like the open answer ones, like how much do you enjoy this league, right? Like Pokemon's about having fun, right? So how, how much fun are you having? Um, and this is basically a scale of one to, you know, over 9,000. Um, so a six, you know, having a six as the lowest score on this, like I think says a lot. Got a couple sevens, got an eight, got a few nines, and then overwhelmingly uh, over 40% but over 9,000, so five, five of the people. So um, I think overall that these surveys were very positive for the league. Um, I appreciate the uh, thoughts and concerns that people brought up. I think that that allowed us to communicate openly about certain things and kind of like point the needle in the right direction and then communicate back to the players and let them know like, hey, we hear what you're saying. These are the moves that are being made. These are the uh, the infrastructure that's being set up, etc. cetera. Uh, did you guys want to say anything about that? Uh, just going off what you said is, yeah, I think it's very telling how only one person scored a six and everything above that was. So I think 
nothing below a six is pretty good. Yeah, and a six is just like, hey, I'm I'm having more fun than not, right? That's what it's right. saying. Like, it's higher than a five, so you're having more fun than you're not having fun. Josh, how about you? Yeah, I think I think, I think the numbers are pretty good, and that they're so overwhelmingly like over nine thousand. Yeah, I I would have liked a uh, what what's that Iron Man one like? Uh, I love you three thousand. I would have liked that <laughs> meme a, li a little more, but maybe that'll be the season three survey or something. All right, so yeah, so guys, that's uh, going over the surveys and what the ERC has been doing the last week. Uh, again, I want to thank Matt for jumping in kind of last minute on this one and really like move, moving the needle on that and getting kind of like digging into those surveys with us too, even though he wasn't there for like the first bulk of it. Um, yeah, so guys, if you before we move on from this ERC part of the podcast and get into the nitty gritty of what's going on around the league, because wow, what a freaking week we got to go over. <laughs> yeah. uh, anything else you guys wanted to add about that? I think um, if there were other, we can talk about other things that were mentioned in the surveys and the, uh, in our ERC chat. And if anybody has any concerns, we'll work on some kind of mailbox that you can input those concerns into. Yeah. And, and again, guys, if you guys, like, I think everyone in the ERC is an open book, right? Like, if you have a question or concern, send it to one of us and we'll be able to bring it to the rest of the committee or, you know, try and figure it out. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think there was anything else really. Matt, did you have anything else for that? Uh, no, I think we covered all of it. Yeah, so awesome. And again, I'm kind of just reiterating what I just said, but if you have any other comments, questions, concerns, relating to the league and you need to reach out to the ERC, that your Boston Braviaries, the LA Kinglers, the Waco Scissors, Montreal Milotic, and the Lavender Town Gang Bars are all on that this season. Awesome. All right, guys. We just finished week five of this season. Transition here. All right, let's, uh, let's take our suit and tie off, right? Let's get back into our you know, Fun stuff. basketball shorts and sneakers and all that. And let's play some damn games. So, uh, yeah. So for those who didn't watch the great match between your Boston Braviaries and the Waco Scissors, Josh, I'll let you kind of go over this one because uh, you, your team obviously came out on top here and moving to four and one. So why don't you break down the match real quick for those who didn't watch the video. Uh, it was uh, it was it was a good match um, that involved Drift Blim um, doing a lot of ally switches um, on Ryan, which was not expected because everybody hates ally switch except the person who's using it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good combination of, uh, of of good playing. I think I think I, I played fairly well. And uh, and luck. I think every match comes down to to good playing and luck. Um, I mean, it, it could be because obviously, like Excadrill was put asleep for one turn. Um, Trick Room was also going on, and Excadrill both woke up and Trick Room wore off on the same turn. Then the two critical hits at the end of the game for me uh, against uh, Ryan's last two moms um, were both obviously lucky. Um, but uh, but those those things all help out. So yeah. I mean, without who knows? Every every like I guess every Pokemon match comes down to a little bit of luck on one yeah. side or the other. Yeah, especially when you're bringing statuses into the game, right? It's like, am I going to get this paralyzed off this turn? Am I going to get that confusion? Hit? You know, so yeah. But you got to play around those. And uh, yeah, luck luck won't carry you, but it does help. For sure. And Matt, so unfortunately you've had a rough patch in your season. Yeah. Yeah, so being one of the top teams early on and now kind of sliding back to the middle of the pack. So how, how was your week five? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a rough loss to Tuscaloosa. They're a good team and they're undefeated for a reason. Um, 
they had just brought everything they could to counter Trick Room, and they played a really good match against me. They brought a lot of unexpected pieces. Their start was very unexpected, and they uh, kind of finished me early. Yeah, five, five Pokemon remaining for them in that match, which, uh, again, is surprising because I, I don't think anyone would say that the Kingos are a bad team. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Tuscaloosa is definitely the team uh, to be feared now, especially when we look at the current standings here. So I'm gonna pull that up real quick. All right, so here we got the current standings now after week five and a lot of changes. So we'll kind of break down the stands real quick and then we'll go over what the hell. So Tuscaloosa stays undefeated as Matt pointed out, five and oh, 24 points. Surprising though, is that they are now the lone undefeated team as Montreal is now four and one with 17 points in second place. Houston moves up to third place, four and one, 16 points. Waco, they are Josh. You move up to fourth place with four and one, 12 points. Denver, who is also undefeated up to this week, slides down to number five with a loss. Four and one, 11 points. Minnesota, also four and one. So we have a lot of four and one teams, guys. Very surprising. Uh, with only nine points, but hey, it's that win-loss that matters at the end of the day, right? Uh, in sixth place. Then we get to Detroit in seventh, three and two with 10 points. Davenport upsetting Montreal, three and two with eight points. They are still in the playoff picture, Matt. Two and three with nine points, thanks to your convincing wins early on. Worcester is making their comeback finally after upsetting the Denver Ninetales, two and three with seven points, now in the playoff picture. Boston slides down two and three with six points. Seattle also surging up. I mean, not so much with the points as Worcester, but getting another win two out of the last three weeks. Uh, two and three with five points. Be uh, excited to see if they can rattle off a couple more, try and make that playoff push. Uh, Paris PSG continues to slide after their week one win. Uh, now one and four with three points. And then we have the three winless teams, Charm City, Mighty Psyduck, and Labyrinth Town Gengars all at 0 and 5. So guys, we had two out of the three undefeated teams lose. We got this giant mess of four and one teams now. Matt, you, you look at these standings. What, what do you think right now? And a lot of four and ones on that board. That is surprising. Because you picked yeah. like so top ten teams make playoffs, right? And Josh, I want I want your thoughts on this. Top ten teams make playoffs. So you're looking at four and four probably, right? But you got all these winless teams that are kind of weighing down that kind of metric, right? Making it so like maybe now you're gonna need those five wins to really guarantee your playoff spot, right? Which is pretty daunting well, for all those two and three teams and even some of those three and two teams, you know, like every match matters. What do you think about that, Josh? Yeah, I mean, um, a, a lot, there's still f how many weeks left? Three weeks left, right? Yeah, any one of these four and one teams could go four and four and like Whisper could have a five three season at the end of the at the end of the season, right? And I could be four four and, you know, miss the playoffs depending on what happens. So things could really change with the, with the way it's distributed now. Yeah. I think uh it's very interesting to see last week there was um like perfect uh what's the word? Symmetry. Like, yeah, symmetry. Thank you. I was like thinking simile. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Perfect symmetry between the standings. And now after one week, we see it very lopsided towards the top half. Um, yeah. Also, um, with the Pokemon points, uh, things can change really fast. I mean, like last week I was in fifth um, and Denver was third, right? 
from Denver thanks to points. Um, and there's a few other close ones like that, like uh, uh, Detroit and Minnesota. Um, that that could change this week. Who knows? Yeah, for Just sure. Based on points. For sure. Playing for those points is uh, very key. Um, you know, the difference between two and three Pokemon left can, you know, you, you do that a couple games and that, that can be a big decider, you know. Especially like like you said, kind of this four through, really four through nine window, even if you want the Worcester in there, you're all within like two or three points of each other. Yeah, and we, we've seen plenty of, uh, of five or six Pokemon sweeps this season that, that, that could easily happen again these next few weeks. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, uh, Matt, anything else you want to say about the stands before we move on to the schedule page? Well, what you guys were saying is that four and four might not be good enough for the playoffs. So I'm looking at it is I think three and five might be good enough to snag a playoff spot if you have enough points. Yeah, I... I guess I could see that. Like, I'm looking at like, so you're saying that it would have to be one of these teams, right? The seven through 12 team? Yeah, if they have enough points, I think three and five will, might be good enough for a 10 spot. I could see like you, like with nine points, if you get one more good win, you know, like a four or five pointer, you could probably sneak in there with like 13, 14 points. I right. don't see like, these teams coming in at a three yeah, and five. The six and the five And points. even like like obviously Detroit and Davenport would have to lose to that. And I don't I don't think eight or ten points would really cut it either. You know? Yeah. I think if you look at three and five, Matt, I think your team might be the only unless you see like one of these teams like win out and get a bunch of points, right? Like, right. Well yeah, I mean if you're looking at it, even Detroit's up there with ten. At three and two, I mean, not saying they yeah, lose. I, I'm straight. saying if they lose out, I don't know if like if they lose out with ten points, I think every other team would have to like not really win, right? Does that yeah, mean? I think so. I, I see like, what you're ten, saying. Ten is on the bubble, I think. Ten, ten is kind of on the bubble at a three and five. Yeah, I think a three and five with about twelve, thirteen, maybe, yeah. maybe eleven, twelve. Yeah, I think 11 or 12 with a 3 and 5, you'd be looking at like a 10, 10 seed, but I think that 4 and 4 is still where you need to get. I think 4 and 4 is a lock at this point. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's scary with all those 4 and 1 teams, you know? Man, crazy stuff, but let's look at the schedule for these teams with our now updated strength of schedule here. So. Boston, um, again, two and three right now, uh, going up against the four and one Minnesota Needle Kings this week. Uh, very interesting matchup there. Uh, four and one, but not a lot of points for a four and one team from Minnesota. They have a very uh, interesting strategy. A lot of one for one trades, so that I think that'll be an interesting game. Detroit, three and two, going uh, up against the Side Ducks, who I've felt performed pretty well this week in their game, the Psyduck, so maybe that's uh, telling them something. Montreal got their first loss, now going up against Worcester, who is on the rise, and uh, we all remember that big trade from uh, week three of the season between Worcester and Montreal, and Montreal has actually gotten rid of a lot of those Pokemon that Worcester traded them. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what's their held on those Pokemon, how they'll be able to uh, kind of thank Montreal, if you would. Be interesting to see. Denver, also with their first loss, going up against the Lavendertown Gengars. I think this could be the Gengar shot to get a win this season. You know, kick, kick the mighty when they're down sort of thing. <laughs> I think that, that this could be like, if, if you're gonna get a win, like we'll look at Lavendertown's uh, schedule in a little bit but if you're gonna get a win this season this might be the week to do yeah, it it's gotta be this week the rest of his schedule looks really hard yeah so i think that this would be the shot here well i wouldn't say that this week is gonna be a cakewalk either. yeah definitely but i'm not. saying if if you were a betting man and you had to put money down on one of these for okay what game is lavender town most likely to win like all your money's on this one right yeah 
yeah. for sure. That that's kind of what I'm saying here. Is like if Lavender Town, Chris, if you want to win, this is the week. Put all put all the chips down. That this is where you can get it if you, you know, make the push here. Don't leave your house. Spend every hour of free time training your Pokemon, and you should be able to do it. There you go. You don't have to spend every hour. This, this game has made it so easy to train Pokemon now. I got it. I play for like a day, and then I look at how many candies I have. In the um, Josh, here you go. Charm City Charizards. So that, that'll be a, a game. Uh, Minnesota and Boston, we already talked about. Matt going up against Houston, a four and one team, rain team. Um, you, this is where you got to turn around, right? Yeah, I think this is it. I, I've had three brutal weeks in a row. Not to say Houston's anything yeah, it, it, no, it's not that, but you got Houston, you got Seattle, who's been, you know, at least uh, I would say consistent. Like they're they're two and three right now, but they have a couple like decent wins, and then you got Waco there at the end. Um, who definitely hasn't been a slouch all season. Yeah, definitely hoping um, after playing three undefeats in a row, hopefully we can get back on track and do something these last few weeks. Yeah, for sure. And then the uh, we got, just kind of skipping over these because they're repeat. We got Davenport going up against the undefeated Tuscaloosa. But Davenport was the upset against Montreal. Will they do it again? What do you guys think? A good feeling. Right. Wow, Dan for playing upset. That's crazy. If they can get both these wins, be a top tier team if they can get both these oh, wins. Oh yeah. Yeah, huge. I'm just looking at that and I'm like, oh, that's scary. Alright, and then last one we got is Seattle going up against uh PSG Paris and Jeremion. Um what do you think? Uh I think this will be a close game. I really hope Paris can kind of turn around. They've had a really tough skid after that uh, solid week one win. Um, I would like to see them make the game of it and turn around. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I don't know much to say. I haven't seen much of PSG this season. So, you know, room for them. Hopefully they can turn it around for themselves. Yeah, looking looking at their looking at PSG schedule compared to Seattle's, PSG is at four four week like yeah. gamut here. Gauntlet, there we go. Yeah. Um and next week, you know, no slouch either. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, PS <laughs> schedule pretty pretty tough. Pretty tough schedule. As uh like we, we won't break it down as much as last week, but for those who are watching the podcast, you can look at the strength of schedule again. The first number um, is your overall strength of schedule. Higher than one means it's a tough schedule. Lower than one means it's easier. You know, I use quotes. But, you know, everybody's playing the game, right? And the other one is the way of strength of schedule, which is just remove your team from the equation. So you're looking for, if you're looking at these two numbers, again, you're looking for this number to be higher than that number. But Again, they're just numbers. They're fun statistics. Interesting to see Tuscaloosa still has the easiest schedule. The undefeated team, even with removing himself. So, you know, you can't really say that it's all because he's beating everybody. All right, so that was the standings. That was the schedule. We'll go over uh, this week's transactions real quick. I'll pull those up. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about for the schedule? Like Josh brought up, only three weeks left in the season, which is crazy to think about that we've come this far. Just like the rest of this year, it's flying by. For sure. All right, so I don't think we had any trades this week. No, but there are a number of, uh, there's a lot of Pokemon on the trading block. Uh, Montreal. Yeah, no one wants them. Tuscaloosa yeah. just put up a bunch of Pokemon on the trading block. Yeah. They're on there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. It's all the C tier dredges. You know, yeah, anybody well, no, wants that to hit me up. Um, Tuscaloosa put up their S and A tier Pokemon. Yeah, but 
don't know. Right? Like, at this point, I think you gotta like your S and A tier, because those are kind of like what you build your team around. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to like, like, we're week five, right? You know, you're like two thirds of the way done with the season. Like, how, how much more can you change your team? Like, you only have a couple more free agent pickups. So you, you can't go changing your core too and, fast. I mean, now. by now you can look at all everybody's stats and see which Pokemon are pulling their weights on each team. Yeah. So you, you can kind of tell, like, well, well except for Montreal because he has a different five Pokemon every week. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that that I got a game with right. this one and traded it away. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's break down these free agent pickups then. Uh, we had Davenport Dragapults. They dropped Gorgeist and added Swoobat. They are hunting for a Tailwind Swoobat. Very interesting for those who've been following on the Discord. Detroit Steelers, they dropped Gardevoir and added Charizard. Houston Darn Mantans, they dropped Eldegoss and added Bear Tick. What you got for a well played Bear Tick? Um, I don't know if they have any ice setters for a slush rush on their team, though. I don't think so. Kinglers dropped Copagrigus and added Dust Noir. Now with Poltergeist, I think that's a straight improvement. You know, Dust Noir with Ultra Guys actually gives it a very solid physical ghost stab. So it can actually play some offense as well. Talon Flames, they dropped Inteleon and added Roserade. Very interesting. I don't know how Roserade really works in the double scene because you're not really setting uh, hazards as much. Maybe you just really want like a Slug Bomb. You needed the Poison type. Yeah. You needed the Poison type. Okay. Oh, yeah, hands. yeah, yeah, Mr. Three Berries or whatever you got. Yeah, he definitely needed that sludge bomb. Montreal, they dropped Kabalion and added Rotom Beat. Interesting pickup. Uh, looks like he, I don't even know if he tried the beat up strategy because he did have Kabalion and Whimsicott. I don't know if he ever even attempted it, but it looks like he definitely got off of that train pretty quick. Uh, the Needle Kings, Minnesota, they drop Maractus and Graflock. Interesting. And the Braviaries, they drop Dustfloss and add Butterfree. So that was all the transactions for the last week. Uh, anything you guys wanted to bring up for that? I see you're trying to get away from the trick room on your team. Trying to make it trickier. Trickier. People yeah. trying to put a stop to the trick room. I still get trick room up, but now now you can't just run taunt or uh, imprison on me. I didn't even know that. Uh, I didn't even know about that copycats Vmax trick. Oh, good because you have. If you had allies switch that turn, I've been even more screwed. You would have gotten <laughs> like a five Pokemon win. All right. Um, yeah, so that was the transactions. Uh, yeah, I think we had a pretty good cast tonight. Um, did you guys want to talk about anything else before we close it out? Yeah. Not really. Right, so, pretty uh, slow week. Yeah. Not, I, I think everyone's just kind of settling on their teams right now. You know, um, Oh, I guess, uh, why don't we announce the MVP pick right now? Oh, yeah. That could be fun. We'll do all that fun stuff. Again, I gotta find a way to do all this stuff. All right, so results. So up for the MVP both this week, we had Riolu from the Detroit Steelix. Uh, if you were able to watch the video or if you heard from uh, some of the people who saw it, uh, Riolu did a lot of work as a support mod. Um, we do like to put support Pokemon up for vote every so often. You know, if they, someone has a good story or if they like, oh man, I follow me and ally switch. Like, I think a couple more key ally switches, Drifflin might've been up there. <laughs> 
We had GMAX Colossal. I think that's been up for MVP voting every week. Unfortunately, it still hasn't won. We had GMAX Gengar, Davenport, upsetting Montreal. Three kills from GMAX Gengar, well-deserved. And the MVP with the 6-0 sweep. Well, he lost the Pokemon before the sweep started, but this Pokemon got all six kills for him. Detroit Steelix Gyarados with that Oxy. So congrats, Gyarados. Well-deserved. And now before we close it out, it's everybody's favorite time, mailbag time. Um, again, we kind of said that this was like a ERC sort of post, so we got a couple of questions for the ERC. I'll let you guys kind of dig over this. So we kind of went over this, but what solutions have been generated in the survey? And are you all happy with the solutions as individuals? So um, I'll kind of let you guys talk about that. If, you know, whatever you want to say, Matt. Yeah, so I mean, I'm pretty happy with the solutions we had. I know one of my concerns was the distinction between ERC and commissioner. So now that I'm fully aware that, ooh, you all right? The, oh, so no. I'm fully aware. The, the, the trophy is gone. I'll never be, be gone game. soon enough. But yeah, so now that I know, you know, the difference between the ERC and the commissioner and that the commissioner isn't uh, end all be all, then I think that was one of my main concerns. And I think that had gotten resolved. Josh, how about you? Yeah, I think, um, I think we have handled everything so far. Um, and we'll just see what other parents come up in the future. All right, and then stay vigilant. Yeah, with with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, Spider Man. I saw that movie. All right. Uh, next question: What changes will be have been made to the MVP nominations and elections to improve the process? I mean, we kind of went over this. Uh, we, well, we did this one website today. I mean, again, we're open to suggestions. I just couldn't figure out Survey Monkey. I know some people had said that, and I was looking at it, and like it keeps having all these pop up windows that are trying to guide me, but just confusing me more than anything. So I was like, okay, I just, I just need something where people can choose one of four options. The, um, Maybe we uh, we can talk about this in the ERC chat. Uh, I actually hadn't thought about this. Um, we can set up some kind of guideline, like if if Pokemon if Pokemon makes X number of KOs, then it'll be in the MVP running. Um, or if like we obviously we don't know everybody's matches, so we don't know like oh this my Drift Blim did all these crazy things that like guaranteed my win. Like it's kind of up to the coaches to contact one of us and make the case for one. Yeah, an MVP running. Um, otherwise, and if nobody does that, then we can say, okay, like the, po the, the three Pokemon with five KOs this week, or the Pokemon, the, the four Pokemon that had the, the, the top four KOs or something. Yeah, right. I mean, obviously the KOs are sexy, so that's what kind of elevates the Pokemon, right? Like you get four KOs, like you're going to be on there. Obviously, Gyarados had six KOs. It was on. Yeah. There one deservedly yeah. and that's why that should be like the default unless people have contacted and said like you know my pokemon did this and this and this and like i think it should be an mvp running and we can like you know consider putting it on there yeah for sure for sure so yeah uh keep up with the videos guys because obviously we all watch those and we'll see when pokemon perform um and definitely if you have a match in your Again, if you have like a Pokemon like, hey, it didn't get all these KOs, but oh uh, man, you know, it, you know, let's say in reverse, dog, let's say I had one R match, I could be like, oh, Butterfree put three Pokemon to sleep. It had a key rage power that kept my Melmetal alive. You know, like, 
you know, stay like, stuff like that, right? The, like the week that, uh, that Paul and Puff and healed Mel Metal back to pull and maybe been able to get yeah. a switch out on him to get that defense. Like, oh man, wouldn't that have been awesome? Like, Butterfree did so much work this week for me. Like, yeah, it died, it got zero KOs, but wow, it was a glue on my team. Got me. I mean, the week, the week that uh, Excadrill, my, my ex, my ex drill won MVP. I don't think, it, I don't think it like shined and like, and it's, it's like KO count. It was only because um, I, I and Devin had said something about it doing the three yeah, times flinch. Yeah, that got yeah. it onto the the voting in the first place. So you have to add for your Pokemon, I guess. Yeah, if they yeah. do something that's not like super obvious that we wouldn't know about. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, obviously the breakdown just go over. Hey, what killed what, right? But uh, yeah, like like Josh said, advocate for your Pokemon. If you got an MVP on your team, let people know. Be proud of how you played, how your Pokemon played. Yeah, I mean, Pop make sure you tell us so we can put it on the list for voting. But yeah, like, you don't even have to tell us specifically, but get in the chat. Just be like, you know, after you see that uh, battle report come out, be like, oh man, yeah. And, you know, Josh couldn't hit my guy at all because I did three ally switches in a row. He, was, he had no idea or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, he had a dragon, like, his Haxorus, like, Minnesota, his Haxorus was watching the Outrage. And I'm Matt, and I got my Clefable out, and I'm just clicking follow me, and it's doing nothing because he can't, you know, it's Choice Band Haxorus, and he's stuck on dragon move. So I just got, like, a free bunch of turns right there from that. So, you know, stuff like that. Ad advocate for your team is all I gotta say. Uh, yeah, so not too much in the mailbag this week. Um, overall, other than the standings changing, not too much craziness in the league this week. I think a lot of people, are, especially those top teams, like all those four and one teams now, like they got the playoff pace, right? Like they're like, okay, where, where's my seating gonna be? I gotta get these last couple wins. I gotta make sure I get that one week by so I have time to prepare. I need to make sure I'm a top six team. I need to make sure I'm a top four team. Get those buys. So, you know, good luck to those coaches. Good luck to all of the ones who are two and three, three and two, you know, still trudging in there. And uh, the 0 and 5 teams, I really wanna see you guys get that win, you know. We didn't have anybody skunk last season. I don't want it to happen again this season. Uh, we do have an interesting final week where the Psyducks in Charm City will both be playing against each other. So even if they end up winless, at least we know one of them will get a win. But I would like to see all the teams get a win, of course. Not at my expense. All right, any other closing comments, guys? Claws up. Claws up. From your commissioner and all the ERC here at 5S, keep battling and stay tuned for next week, guys.